Okay, it is recorded. All right. All right, good evening. Welcome to the Selfridge Town Council meeting held remotely Monday, March 30th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Chairman's announcement pursuant to, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020, order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town Council is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately ac access the proceedings as provided for in the order. Despite our best, best efforts, we are not at this time able to provide for real-time access, and we will post a record of this meeting on the City of Town's website as soon as we are able. Mary, if you could please call the roll. Councilor Adams. Present. Councilor Catrona. Present. Councilor Daniel. Present. Councilor Jovan. Present. Councilor Lazo. He's excused. Councilor Mana. Present. Councilor Marchetti. Present. Councilor Nash. Present. Councilor Steve. Present. Present. Did you hear me? Yes, yeah. I heard you. Okay. Okay, for the record, also participating in this meeting due to the agenda items currently are DPW Director Heather Blakely, Southbridge Police Chief Shane Woodson, Southbridge Fire Chief. Paul Normandon, I didn't forget your name, Paul. I was just trying to swallow you. Yeah. Richard Clements of the Airport Commission and Town Manager Ron San Angelo. Well, good evening. We're considering accept the Town Council minutes of Monday, March 9th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, well, okay we have Councillor Katrona moving that question. Councillor Steves with a second. Are there any errors, corrections, or omissions that anybody would like to? Offer up. I have a couple. I have. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mike. All right, Mr. Chairman. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Town Manager. Uh, just to, for purposes of notice, Karen, our the Finance Director, and Melissa, uh, the Treasurer, are both also on the phone call. Yeah, I apologize. I, it wasn't intentional to uh, neglect those two. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Okay, Mr. Marchetti, go ahead with your corrections. Okay, um, agenda item nineteen. When we were talking about the Morris Street, uh, actually, we were talking about the CDBG grant for the Hamilton parking lot alleyway. Um, in the, uh, on a, I think the sixth, it starts on the sixth page with my comment. I said that I wanted uh, sidewalks and guardrails for the Morris Street next to the, um, the field. Uh, the minutes just say guardrails, but I said sidewalks and guardrails. Second of all, uh, uh, Council, I we missed that because you're kind of breaking up. What was that about sidewalks? When on agenda item 19, when we were talking about the CDBG grant money for the Hamilton alleyway, I said that uh, I would rather the money be used for sidewalks and guardrails on Morris Street next to the field. The minutes just say guardrails. Uh, second of all, uh, in response to uh, the CDBG grant uh, coordinator saying that the money had to be used by June, I asked if the... All right, Mike, we completely lost your feed. I don't have you. I'm, I'm, I still see you. I can hear you, I, Mike. I can hear him, too. Yep. Sure, can sure, yeah, I can hear him, too. Can the recording here, uh, Secretary, hear me? Yep, I got it all. Okay. Okay. It must be on my end. I didn't get it. All right. All right. Second of all, um, when I responded that I was wondering if the money, if the project, the alleyway was going to be completed by June, since the, we would lose the money, the, uh, the minutes say message, I said money. I was responding to the grant coordinator saying that the money had to be used by June. So I said that, is the alleyway going to be completed by June? or else we would lose the money. 
the minutes say uh, the message. And finally, on that same topic, the uh, the minutes in the minutes, the the uh, original grant, uh, the original agenda. Excuse me, is the same as the uh, agenda that was changed. They look exactly the same to me. Unless I'm reading it wrong, shouldn't they be different? That's a question. I mean, I'm not sure what you mean. The agenda 19 reads the same as uh, the motion, uh, the motion that was uh, re reconsidered. They're exactly the same. Oh, okay. I can update that. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> and that's all I have. Thank you. Hey, Council Steve. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of things, just mostly minor things. Um, item number six, hydrating should be hydrant. Item number 7B, it says per day, per month, there should be a phrase in there, discipline referrals after that. Um, item number 11 should be Peter Knoyer, C-O-U-R-N-O-Y-E-R. -E and item number 23 should read from the water returned area, return, retained earnings. That's all I had. Okay, thank you. Any, anybody else? Chairman, please note that I'll be abstaining on the vote. Nash. Okay, thank you. you just give me a second. I just want to change something. <clears throat> Okay, any further discussion on that? Hold on. Did we lose Jack? No, he said to hold on. And he just turned his camera off for a minute. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Anybody respond so I can see if I can hear. I, I can, can hear you, Jack. Jack. Can't see you. There you are. I can see you now, Jack. <clears throat> Ron, I can only see half your face, like your eyes. I don't know if you want to adjust your camera. Okay, Councilor Daniel, if you could just... Uh... Run, uh, all those in favor, if you could take the roll, please, Mary. Yep. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? <coughs> Councilor Jovan? You may want to skip him. Just for now. Okay. Yeah. Well, yes. Okay. I'm. I'm back. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Manna. As Amanda, right? Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Nash. Abstain. Councilor Steve. Yes. Okay. Thank you. My apologies for that. I had to switch from Bluetooth in my house. So. All right. Uh, subcommittee reports. Is there anybody that uh, I'll go down the road? General Government, do you have anything, Council Steve's? 
that's pending? Um, no, we do not. I, no meeting scheduled. Um, do are we actually going to do subcommittee meetings for the budget this year? Um, I think that's what we're going to talk about when we get to the uh, town manager's presentation on budget. We'll talk about that at that point. Okay. okay. Department of Public Works, Councilor Nash. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, nothing to report at this time. We have some agenda items that we have uh, to bring up for discussion in the future, but nothing so urgent or pressing that we need to bring to the attention of the council as yet. Thank you. Okay. Education and Human Services, Councilor Lazo is excused this evening. He doesn't have anything at this point. Plan and Development, Councilor Adams. Nothing reported this time. Nothing planned. Thank you. Protection of Person Property, Council Mana. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Nothing to report and nothing, um, no meetings planned. Thank you. Okay. So, under subcommittee reports, it's uh, my intent once uh, we uh, can get the participation part of our meetings cleared up for either go to meeting or this platform when we have solid procedures in place for the specific counselors to set those up if they wish to then go forward with those meetings because it uh, looks like we'll be in this for a while. So chairman's announcements. First, I had a resident that contacted us or contacted me, want to thank us for the work that we're doing through this COVID-19 situation. <clears throat> she just wanted us to relay if we could through whatever media that we can, that uh, she was an elderly, um, individual she just wanted us to ask that neighbors help neighbors and to check in with uh, fellow elderly because a lot of them are in the house and perhaps just a friendly call to just check in so if we can pass that on as you're aware schools will be closed through may 4th also want to thank all of you for uh the cooperation going forward with this change in government obviously like i just stated with the president's announcement that he's extended the uh, social distancing advisory through at least April 30th, it's going to be a challenge on all of us to get through the various meetings that we have to hold, as well as the budget. And uh, we'll talk about how we're going to set up the budget. I did ask Chief Woodson, who's uh, one of the incident commanders and part of the Emergency Operations Center, to be here tonight just to go over some things. First off, I just want to thank all the um, all the people involved in the Emergency Operations Center that has been up and going since uh, now a week. A lot of work has been done. Uh, and it's been a great collaboration of individuals that have come together to make sure we push out as much information as we can to the public uh, to get uh, up-to-date information. And I think it's uh, Dave Adams has done a great job with Chief Woodson and developing our website to make sure that all the information that we get from department heads and other entities are pushed forward as we move forward through this uh, COVID-19 incident. So thank you all for that. Before I go to the chief, I just, <clears throat> one more thing that uh, our town clerk had uh, given to me today, asked me to uh, read this evening um, during chairman's announcement. This was a result of a call that she had today with legal counsel with Copeland and Page for all town clerks in Massachusetts relative to the annual town election. The annual town election is scheduled for Tuesday, June 9th, 2020, and nomination papers are now available to persons who wish to run for local office in the town election. The offices needing to be filled are council at large, three years, three positions. Board of Assessor, three years, one position. School committee, three years, three positions. School committee, two years, one position. Selfridge Redevelopment Authority, five years, one position. Selfridge Housing Authority, five years, one position. Selfridge Housing Authority, three years, one position. Nomination papers require 39 signatures for all town-wide offices. Nomination papers must be returned to the town's clerk office for a certification of signatures by Tuesday, April 21st, 2020 at 5 p.m. Due to the current situation, be advised that the deadline for nomination papers and the amount of signatures needed cannot be changed. However, if one wishes to run for a town office, call the town clerk's office and they will run off enough nomination papers that you can obtain one signature per page, not requiring many people touching the same paper over and over again. If you have already taken out nomination papers and wish to receive additional sheets, 
please call the town clerk's office and we will make up more sheets. The town clerk's phone number is 508-764-5408. For the conversation that she had today with the advisory is they will not change election procedures and that they must go forward as scheduled. Our election is scheduled for June, so she feels that that will be um, you know, a little later in the calendar. But all elections have to be completed by June 30th for all towns. They are not making any uh, alterations to that schedule. She did communicate that they will get out further information later on as to uh, the ability for people to get uh, mail-in ballots so that they can uh, get them mailed in um, for an absentee ballot uh, process. Uh, I've asked um, Councilor Adams through the Emergency Operations Center and uh, Chief Woodson to make sure that that information gets added to our daily brief as well as uh, to uh, the Facebook Live that they do uh, and will be doing later on this week so that we can get that information out. So with that, um, Chief Woodson, I know you had a few things that you wanted to bring to the table, so I will turn that over to you as part of my chairman's announcement. I've asked him to participate in that regard. So Chief Woodson. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Town Manager, members of the Town Council. I'm in my 12-year-old son's room, so don't mind the uh, blue background. This is the only place in my house I can find that's quiet. Um, just to kind of go over a little bit of what's been going on for the last week or so, just so everybody's informed. On Friday, uh, as you know, you voted a local state of emergency. We transitioned over to the unified command structure. And we formed that emergency operations center. On Sunday, we held our first meeting. And since then, we've met last Monday, last Tuesday, last Thursday. We met again today. All the agendas are prepared by the town council chairman, Joven, and all the minutes are being taken by my administrative assistant. So if anybody wants any information on the work that's being done at the EOC, you can get that from those minutes. Uh, town Councilor Adams is acting as, and I know Mr. Joven already mentioned this, but he's acting as one of our public information officers. And he posts every single day EOC updates to what's going on in our community. And he posts that to the town website. I share it to my Facebook page. I know the fire chief shares it to his social media also. It's a single source for all COVID-19 related information, and it's in Spanish and English now. Uh, this was done because we want to be transparent with our residents. We want them to know exactly what's going on in the community to avoid spreading rumors. In fact, uh, just this morning, I was speaking with a town councilor, and uh, he was concerned because a family member of his had gotten some information that there were you know, 300 or so positive cases in the uh, community. And my uh, and uncle in my community, Can you still hear me? Yes. I'm sorry. Like, and I had, I had a family member. My uncle had called me. He lives in Southbridge. And he was also concerned. He said he heard this, a similar rumor where there was a couple hundred uh, positive cases. Um, which brings me to this. So as of today, we have five confirmed cases. Um, it's an unprecedented situation. And I have to say the Board of Health and Andy have done a really good job of getting uh, my, my staff and the fire chief staff, the guys and girls who are on the front lines dealing with this stuff. He's done a great job getting us the information. Uh, there was some discussion today that the Department of Public Health they put out a recommendation to not share information locally as far as specific numbers. And what they basically suggested was just say Worcester County, and I'll, you know, just I'll make up a number, uh, 200 cases in Worcester County, rather than singling out individual communities. The members at the EOC had, had spoken at length about this, and all of us were in agreement that this was not a good idea. It's only a recommendation from the Department of Public Health. It's not an order. It's not a requirement. So we're going to keep posting actual numbers in Southbridge so there's no, um, you know, widespread panic for no reason. So there's no misinformation. So people aren't clicking, you know, Google and searching the wrong site and getting the wrong information and then relaying that to, you know, friends and family and causing panic. So until we're told by the DPH to not do this, um, we're going to keep going forward with sharing that information with the community because I think we need to be transparent. Um, Tom Councilor Adams and I had our first Facebook Live last Tuesday, and we plan on doing this from here on out every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We have a little over 5,000 views as of today, so in my opinion, it was very successful. Um, we're going to do that starting Thursday in Spanish and English. Um, it's going to be interactive with the public because, I mean, after all, the purpose of our social media page at the police department is to interact with the public, so we're going to continue to do that. We're going to ask questions. We're going to be open. We're going to be transparent. If somebody has a reasonable question or a request, we will take care of it. And just real quick, as far as the PD operations at my place, um, just so the council's aware, we now screen all of our police officers when they arrive on duty. 
The school's been great. They've gotten us necessary equipment to do this uh, from their nurses' offices that aren't being used right now. When they come on duty, we check them. When they leave, we check them. And, you know, this is just so we can identify any potential issues and symptoms early on. We have to be hypervigilant with this. I absolutely cannot afford to have a police officer infected, and although it may happen, we're taking every precaution available to prevent that from happening, which is why we're testing at the beginning and the end of every shift. Our dispatchers continue to ask non-invasive questions, and, and quite honestly, we've had no issues in the community that I know of. No one's complained. No one's brought it to my attention. I know the town manager hasn't mentioned it to me as far as complaints or concerns. It's just being hypervigilant. Our dispatchers are asking simple questions. Have you traveled out of the country? Have you had a fever? Have you had a prolonged sore throat? Those type of things. Because that will address or kind of dictate how we deal with a call. Can we do it over the phone? Do they have to come out to the street corner to meet us and things like that? Um, and on the last note, the schools, that number is rising every day. I believe town council, uh, the chairman might have better information than me, but it's over 600 now. Meals being served to our children. And our police department is involved in that. We're monitoring those sites making sure everything's kind of going the way it needs to go and there's been no issues and, and we will absolutely uh, continue that for as long as we possibly can. So with that, Mr. Chair. I have a question, if uh, I may, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Council. I, I kind of added this too, so that we could have information, a little unusual the way we're doing it, but go ahead, Council Amanda, that's fine, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Chief Woodson. Um, how are you dealing with the crowds when they form on the street and they just start hanging around and they talk with each other? I was driving through town, um, I believe it was Sunday morning, and I saw, um, I don't know, probably about eight or ten people on one corner just talking with each other and hanging out. How are you, um, when you, it, do you come across a lot of that? Or, and, and if you do, how do you deal with that? For you, Mr. Chair, and if I can, Council Mayor, we have been coming across a lot of that, and we disperse the people. Um, I will, I'm not going to lie, it's very difficult to enforce that at this point in time. As this thing progresses, if it gets worse, there may have to be some other action that's taken. But right now, we absolutely do not want to get into a, a confrontational situation where we're arresting people. Our courts aren't open. No one can tell me when the courts are opening again. They give us soft dates, but we have no mechanism in place right now to... to to even arrest people for those offenses that may change but as of right now people are, they comply you know they're gathering and doing things they probably shouldn't be doing in this type of situation but when we ask them to move on they move along so that's we're just kind of taking it case by case right now thank you thank you um thank you chief um good job I, thank yeah. you i i just want to say um one thing uh additionally <laughs> after the chief's presentation here we should be very proud of all the hard work that our department heads have been putting in as we address this uh, COVID-19 situation. Again, it's unprecedented and the difficulty is, and I've said this in our meetings, that when you have an incident such as an earthquake or tornado or anything like that, you have a lot of, you know what's in front of you, you have specific tasks that you have to uh, accomplish, you know you have to open a road, you have to cut down trees and all that. And this is, uh, as has been said, an invisible moving target that nobody knows where it's going to pop up. So we should be very proud of all the hard work that all our departments are doing as they cooperatively work. Um, and let's keep all our employees, um, our first responders and uh, police, fire, DPW, who are out in the streets still working as far as uh, town hall, all in their thoughts so that uh, they stay safe um, as we move forward. So with that, I'll turn this over to Mr. Town Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I'm going to start off echoing your words. Uh, thank you for uh, showing your appreciation to all the teammates out there. They're working their tails off, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of anxiety all throughout the different departments uh, as this is occurring. And uh, decisions are made and then changed. There's just so much fluidity to this. And as we get more information, we're, we have to change what we're doing uh, to meet whatever the information that came in is. And uh, it's been very, very stressful, and I appreciate uh, what all the employees are going through. Uh, one of the things that's happening a lot, there's a tremendous amount of communication among town managers and town administrators. We communicate mostly all through email on a regular basis to find out what each other is doing and what are the status of their employees and in different situations that are occurring and how they're handling it. So I appreciate the, the managers all across the area that are, are giving us information going back and forth. I send out to town council a tremendous amount of information prior to the EOC opening on things that have been done 
uh, what DPW is, is dividing up their crews and changing the hours a little bit. And we got one guy per truck. Town Hall, I've got about 16 employees who can work at home, who have the ability to work at home, are all set up. And m most of all their computers are set up to the Town Hall computer computers. Uh, there's one or two that just don't need that, but otherwise they are connected. Uh, employees are all working uh, and they're getting paid because they are working. And as things progress, we'll, we'll have to look at that issue going forward, but I'm not exactly sure. You know, if this is a two-week event, it'll be one thing, but if this turns out to be a two- or three-month event, we're going to have to clearly look at things differently. So uh, I think so far everything is going pretty well. Uh, we have not heard any complaints from residents. Our biggest concern right now is the revenue coming into the town for the fourth quarter. Obviously, it's a lot more difficult. People are losing their jobs. Uh, payments aren't coming in. There's no hotel tax, no meals taxes. Uh, people are not out buying new cars. And you can understand that that's going to have a negative uh, impact on our current budget and also on our future budget. And we're going to talk more about that when we get into the budget presentation. Uh, that's all I have in terms of uh, my announcements, Mr. Chairman. And I'll start whenever you like on the budget presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, any, um, okay, we got, we'll go through town manager's FY 2021 budget presentation. Um, before uh, the town manager starts, just uh, to let you know, the way I had anticipated this meeting going was the town manager to do a brief presentation of the budget uh, to make sure that we adhere to the charter requirements of the budget being presented by March 31st. Uh, and then as we move forward, get into a more detailed meeting when we can do a actual public presentation and have the ability for any public to be able to respond to any questions and all that. Um, look forward to the presentation as we move forward. Uh, and I'm with that, I'll turn that over to town manager. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to go through this rather quickly. I do want to point out, though, obviously this budget was created before the impact of the coronavirus. So I have a feeling that we're all going to be working to make some adjustments as a reflection of the revenues we lose, not knowing what kind of state revenue we're going to get. Uh, the state's losing tons of money as well. So there's a lot of unknowns, but this budget is as of prior to the coronavirus. And again, be prepared that we're going to have to change it. The first page is just the basic information. I'm not going to go over things that are pretty standard. The second page is the vision statement that we have just to be fiscally responsible. I will say that this is a very conservative budget. There's not a lot new in this budget. Uh, a lot of things that I would have liked to do, uh, we just simply can't do because of uh, the amount of uh, increased costs in a number of areas. The goals and objectives, the third page, uh, obviously I'm still trying to increase the road improvement fund. It was a commitment we made last year to increase it every year by 100000 This year there's uh, $200,000 put in that fund. Uh, hopefully we can keep that money there, but that's one of the, the big issues to this budget. Uh, again, we put in some funds for the improved uh, public safety, the uh, SAFER grant. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. The next page is the Chapter 90 money for roads. You'll see uh, the 2020 is 490728 That's a decrease from last year. So the money, at least until this point from the state, is lower than it was the year before for roads. Road conditions, obviously, we talked about this last year that we really need a million dollars just to stay even. Uh, and while we're increasing the money for roads, it's gonna be a while before we get to the point where we're even maintaining our roads where we should. Next page, increased funding for the road improvement fund. Me and the chair and others have talked about trying to use some extra money for roads and we talked about using free cash for that. And I'll explain later why we didn't use free cash. Me and Karen decided to transfer or recommend transfer from sale of town owned properties account to the road improvement fund 200 grand the money is in an account we believe we can use it to improve roads last year we budgeted 100 grand for road improvements there's still 94 grand 94 780 in that account we add an additional two hundred thousand dollars for this year's budget which gives us a total of four hundred ninety four thousand seven hundred eighty you'll see heather's plan is to uh, do brentwood drive and prospect street and then if there's any remaining money to do Marsh Avenue, she'll talk at great length when we get into those discussions. Impact of central dispatch, just again, we're finishing up the central dispatch. So eventually we'll have six firefighters on staff. Right now we have five in the dispatcher. So we'll get the six. The next page is the safer grant. That's an updated chart from the previous year. Uh, just gives the new chart. 
If you look at year one, you'll see the total applicant share at $80,576. That's not what's in the budget because we won't have a fireman, those firemen for the full year. So for this year's budget, we're actually allocating $27,745. Again, that's we are planning for the grant. If we get the grant, we'll have to deal with that situation as it comes up. The next page is state revenues. You'll see if you look at Sherry Street sheet receipts, that the total amount of state funds went up by $440,582. If you look below, you'll see the individual line items that went up. You'll notice that the big amount is charter school for $261,145. While that looks good, I'm going to discuss with you later why that's really not good because expenses went up more than the revenues, so the town's going to have to contribute more for charter school. So while it looks like a good increase, it's not compared to our expenses. The next page is fiscal impact of the charter school. This is exactly what I was talking about. You'll see, if you look under fiscal year 2020, charter school assessment 1,193,970. If you drop down to the next paragraph, it says fiscal year 2021, 20, you'll see that the cost, the assessment, went up by 1,599,329. So that's a significant increase of cost. And even though the reimbursement went from 233,466 in 2020, it went up to 494,611. So here, uh, there's 144,000 difference that the town is gonna have to make up just on the charter school costs alone. It's significant. Chapter 70 funding, the next page, uh, you'll see uh, in the difference between 19 and 20, we had a great year. The state gave us an additional 1 million Seven hundred and thirty-two, five hundred and thirteen dollars. It was great, and I think uh, when the chairman and I were talking with the school system last year, we expected that increase to be significant going forward. In the explanation from the finance director and the school system and the business manager, we thought it was going to go up a lot. As it turned out, you'll see the Chapter Seventy funding from twenty-one to twenty is only a sixty-six thousand nine hundred and thirty dollar increase, which is frankly horrible uh, in terms of the state's commitment this year to funding and not at all what we expected. The next page is, is actually really important. As you know, we give the school system a set amount of money each year, but there are costs of education that are not directly given to the school system. So you'll see health insurance, workers comp, property and liability insurance, pension. You'll see that all of them that go up well above the two and a half percent that other things uh, we try to keep underneath two and a half. For a total increase, of education costs that are part of the town budget, not part of the school budget, of 174,352, which is the last line of this thing, for a 4.56% uh, increase cost to the town uh, that are ed it's essentially education expenses. And if, if somebody's concerned and not following, please don't be afraid to stop me if, you, if you're caught up in something. The next page is total increased contribution to education. Now, I gave you guys a new copy of this with a, a change that we made in this on this one slide. We had not included Bay Path uh, education costs. Uh, the, you'll see here the charter school, the increase is 144,214, which I talked about in the previous page. Choice went down slightly 15 grand. The Bay Path assessment this year is unique. It went up by 172,638, which is way more than normal. That's an additional 27 students uh, that are going to Bay Path, and that's a significant increase for us. The next line, additional local tax dollars, 218,075. That's what I'm recommending. It's a 1% increase uh, to the school budget. Uh, the school budget is asking Excuse me, can I say something? Yep. So on the additional local tax dollars, you said 218.075. On the new sheet, oh, it's 218.070. Yeah, two two eighteen oh seventy is the number. Okay. Okay. You said seventy five. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I probably I just think I just read it too fast. But two eighteen oh seventy is the additional local tax dollars. That's what I'm recommending for the school budget. Again, it, it's only a one percent increase, and we'll talk about that later as well. So the total direct local contribution is five hundred nineteen seven hundred and four dollars. If you go to the next column, and you add the state contribution of sixty six nine thirty. You go to the bottom of the second column, the total state and local funding increase is 586634 
Now, if you go, if you take the total town funding, the 694056, and you add that to the 66,000 of state funding, the increase to the total school budget is 2.44%. Now, the schools aren't going to look at it that way because that's the town's total education funding, not just money we give directly to the Southridge School District. Now, to keep in mind here, my understanding is the school district lost about 100 students. So, you know, those students, those, for instance, those 27 students that were in the school system go to Bay Path, the money gets shifted with them uh, to Bay Path. So that's a, a significant issue. Um, so you'll see the total state and town funding increase for education is $760,000. And we're going to talk a lot about that when we actually have the budget subcommittee meetings. The next page is Town Council School District funding option. You remember last year I gave you multiple options for funding the school district doing the same thing. Last year I gave you three. This year I'm only given two. The town manager proposed the dollar increase is $285,000. Uh, so the school budget that I'm proposing is $28,744,243. Uh, after new growth, the tax increase would be 2.98%. So you know in past years, I've always talked about trying to keep it to 2.5%. Uh, this does not do that, and there's a variety of reasons for that, most of which is the school budgets is the big issue. But the next section, the next column, or next uh, horizontal line is uh, a 2% increase to the school budget. So increasing it to five, giving them $570,000, and look what it does to the tax rate after new growth. It changes it to 4.27%. So you can see the impact on education would be in, under those various options. Very difficult to give them more money uh, based upon what it would do to the tax rate. The next page, fiscal year 2021, the tax levy and impact. This is what the town manager recommended, recommended which is if you look, you'll see uh, the change at the town manager projected levy is 23198336 Just subtract the tax levy from 2020. The 21,935, and you get an increase of tax levy of a million two sixty two nine ninety three, which is a five point seven six increase. Now, if you reduce new growth, the six hundred and ten three eleven, you're going to come down to that two point nine eight percent tax increase I was talking about. Now, that six hundred and ten of new growth is significantly higher than we ever had in the past. You will remember that we have the new solar fields coming on board this year. Uh, the Mealink uh, solar fields. So that significantly increased our new growth for this year. That why That's why that number is so high. You'll also remember that I said, hey, we're not going to spend this money because we're going to need it to pay for OPEB costs. You're going to find in this budget that even with that 2.98% increase, there's no money in this operating budget for OPEB. And we'll explain why as we go along. Next is the town budget projection model uh, for revenues. You'll see a little ways down the Cherry Street receipts. We talked about that. 440582 or 1.62% increase. Um, I'm not going to get into the millennium. We can talk about that more in detail when we get it. But there's a uh, $125,000 $125, reduction relating to millennium. But there's an addition of debt service of 220. So we'll, we'll get more into detail about that in the committee meetings. It's just a way that we have to... Um, account for that. The next page is the town budget projection mile expenses. Now you're going to see uh, the big thing charter school assessment under expenses, the third section down, and that's $405,000, a 33.95% increase. That's significant. Uh, the general operating budget goes up 3.48%. I'll explain to you that, but really the reason for that is $100,000 in road money that we put in. That's why it's going up over the two and a half. Most of it's just the road money. Um, OPEB, you'll see no money is going in OPEB. Uh, we're going to put a little bit in from free cash, but that's something we're going to have to talk about with the Casella money like we've done in the past because there just simply isn't any money to put in in this budget. You go down to retirement, you'll see a big increase in the retirement costs, 248989 That's a huge Budget number, 6.87%. That's a requirement uh, by the uh, state government in how we bring up our retirement and slowly get rid of unfunded liability. Uh, nothing we can do about that number. The Southbridge Public Schools at the very bottom of the line, 
you'll see the $285,000 increase there as well. Um, I'm going to go to the general operating budget, fiscal year 2020 general operating budget. You'll see about a little more than half what's called special articles. That is the road money, the $100,000 in road money. That, that's why it went up by 55%. The other one that went up by higher percentage is elections. It's small dollars, but the reason it went up, obviously, we have an additional election. So that number went up significantly. Down a little bit lower towards the end, you'll see the restructuring of the Veterans Community Services. Uh, it was $104,000 in 2020. That's been split up uh, to Veterans Services and Community Center. Basically, the same money going in and out. It's just kind of a wash of what we did with the Veterans Services. Next page, expenses increases beyond our control. This is the page that, uh, as you'll see, the total cost, I've talked about in other areas, is a $181,000 increase, 172. The first line, a 3.8% increase in things that, frankly, we have no control over. Group health and life insurance, property and casualty, workers' comp, unemployment. Those are all big increases, more than 2.5%, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. Retirement, I told you that big number. Two hundred forty-eight thousand nine eighty-nine. That's the difference. A six point eight seven percent increase. The only good news here is the debt service went down by sixty-five thousand. But other than that, it's all bad news in terms of our costs. The next page is our stabilization fund. As you are aware, we've been putting between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars every year into stabilization. This year, we're not doing that. We're only adding sixty thousand. That'll mean over a five-year period, we've contributed a million dollars to our stabilization fund. That puts us at a reasonable uh, percentage uh, of money in our stabilization fund. That's good news right now. Frankly, maybe great news because if we have big budget problems as it was relating to this virus, it's possible we could be taking money out of stabilization depending upon how this all plays out. So it was great that we put it in because it gives us some protection uh, depending upon what happens at the end of this year and going into next year. In this budget, you're going to see the budget documents, the books are ready, and you're going to be able to pick them up tomorrow. If you have a problem picking them up, let us know, and we can deliver them out to you. The budget books are going to be more informative than ever. You're going to have the regular operating budget is going to be in your budget book, a six-year capital plan for general town. You're going to have a six-year capital plan separated for water and sewer. Usually we do uh, free cash, and I bring through – a free cash uh, line items and you know, request for how we're going to allocate free cash. This year, you're going to see the free allocation. The free cash allocation is already recommended and in this budget, so you'll see that as well. In the six-year capital plan, you'll see summaries from other department of what they did this year. So it should be easier for you to follow those summaries in the capital plan for the current uh, for the 2021 year. So that should be easier for you to follow. Um, the capital plan, the, the sad part about the capital plan is that there's so much more need than we have money for, uh, and it, that creates a long-term problem, not having the kind of money we need to deal with infrastructure issues. The next steps, again, these next steps may change depending upon what happens with this virus and what it costs us, but uh, the big thing here uh, that I recommended, I think many of you thought, and I did too, that I would be recommending a DPW facilities management director to start looking at the long-term future of all the town buildings, both the town side of government and the school side of government, because the buildings keep deteriorating, and at some point we're going to have to borrow a significant amount of money to do those projects. And we don't have a staff person to handle that. Me and Heather have had a lot of discussions about that. But because this budget uh, is very conservative and costs that were out of our control, I am not recommending or putting any money in this year's budget for that in spite of the fact that I think it's something that we seriously, seriously have to look at. The next number of pages are just an explanation of why I believe that we need a facilities manager. Uh, again, if council feels this worthwhile, we can look at the budget and see if we can find funds for it. But over the long term, well, there's a lot of infrastructure issues that I think we need to deal with. Uh, so that is all there for your information. And, and as we go through subcommittees, um, we can discuss that issue. Uh, our town department heads are all ready uh, for whatever structure we set up for the, the town council. I, sus I suspect from Jack's comments that 
we're going to have to set up, go to a meeting account or use the new one I set up in some way to do the subcommittee meetings, but I'll leave it to the chairman to, to explain that um, and how, what he's thinking going forward. That's all I have in the town budget. It was a fast review. If we do a, a full presentation of town council, I try to do it more in depth with a lot of information you guys already understand, but the general public would not. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions for the town manager? I just have one. Uh, yeah, I have. All right, I'll uh, go to Council McKetty first, and this then is, Council Steve. This is all going to okay. be included in the, uh, the binder? Yeah, all of this information in the book. So you're going to have more information in your binder than you've ever had in the past, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Steves, go ahead. Right, thank you, Jack. Um, Ron, or, or either to you or Jack, um, a quick question here. Is, uh, you mentioned the, uh, the, the possible issues with COVID-19 spending. Do, you have any, do we have any rough estimates of what actual costs are likely to be? And has any, have you get it? And I talked to you, Jack, about, I uh, emailed you, Jack, about um, looking into the idea of the state doing, allowing deficit spending. So, so have we looked into that? So, to um, you, Mr. I'll, Chairman? Yeah, let, does how manager respond? Thank you. To be honest with you, Councilor Steves, I'm not as concerned about the expenses as I am the loss of revenues. So the expenses, even Andy's getting some money to deal with some of his going expenses. You know, most of our expenses so far are budget in the budget, salary and all those things. The major concern that me, Karen, and Melissa are having is on the revenue side, for the, particularly for the fourth quarter. Uh, if we, you know, I think there's about, and I'll let Karen and Melissa add to this, I think there's about $5 million of outstanding revenues that would be collected in the fourth quarter. The question is, how much of that $5 million can we collect? Now, as you know, you know, our revenues budgeted need to meet our expenses. So our expenses are staying close to the same, maybe even going up a little bit. And if the revenues fall off, let's say we only collect, I don't know, three and a half of the five, we're short a million and a half dollars. So that's the big fear, Councilor Steves, is that revenue number um, and how that impacts us. We put in a spending freeze where all department has any expense over $500 on the town side have to be me approved by me and Karen. But frankly, I don't think we only got one quarter left. And there's a lot of things that we have to spend contractually. So I don't think there's going to be real big savings out of that. We're trying to save everything we can. But the, the revenues are extremely concerning to us. And so far, the state government has not said that they are going to make up some of those lost revenues. So that's the, the major area of concern. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, I was going to say about state revenues issues, the state thing too. So thanks. Yeah, yeah, and Gus, I think uh, too on uh, on your thing about spending. We, really, right now we've really instituted through the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, Karen is part of that center to manage finance for us through the Incident Command Center. So it's really keeping track of what the expenses will be, keeping a good eye on it. Um, and the chiefs have been doing a really good job of uh, managing their departments right now. And I think uh, as we move forward really going to have to have a conversation with the school department as to what savings they may realize you know obviously with no uh students going to school you know they may have some money through busing that they're not uh, spending busing and like that but that's probably conversations that we'll have later on M mr chairman yep mr chairman yeah just to let you know myself and karen and melissa had a conversation uh with the uh, receiver um because we wanted them to institute the same same 500 dollar spending restrictions that we did on the town side we were pretty much told that the state has recommended to them that they continue spending as they would and he's advised us that they're going to have increased spending uh but the state is recommending to continue to spend their money and they are not essentially going to participate in our 500 hundred dollar limit they are going to look for savings wherever they can the busing issue itself is they're not busing students that we had raised that as an issue in the meeting uh, and it was expressed to us that there has to be a busing company to go to uh, when school starts, and they're afraid that if the busing company isn't paid, there may not be a busing company to go to. So we had a, a, we raised a lot of those issues with the school receiver. Uh, I think he answered them honestly, but I'm not sure we were excited about the information that we heard. I'm sure we'll have further discussion. Does anybody else have any questions to Ron specifically on? this presentation that he, he put out. Um, I do have one quick one too, Jack. Um, regarding okay. uh, as funding goes, um, how much money do we have left in snow and ice, and could we use that for some of these issues? 
Well, I'm sure there is some money in snow and ice. I'll, I'll leave that. I don't know if Karen has that number right in front of her, Councilor Steves. Uh, Heather's on the line, too. She may know off the top of her head. So if the chairman would allow Heather to address that, I think she could give us the best guess. Well, I think uh, what we'll do is maybe put that question to and have a budget update uh, sent out to us on, uh, you know, the uh, budget uh, status report of uh, through Munis or uh, KBS, whichever one we're doing. And then we can bring those questions up at the next meeting and see where we're going to realize that. So I want to leave this specific to this year's next year's budget going forward. OK, if, if you may, Council Steves, that's OK with you. Yeah, that's OK. Thanks. OK. Council Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, just a question. Um, because he just read the budget papers and wasn't presenting on um, this video remote call, um, will this be put up on the website? Are we going to have a formal budget presentation, um, a special town council meeting, or anything um, for the public so they can have a better idea of what he's talking about? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'd like to, uh, you know, do that at another meeting when we could get uh, perhaps that scanned in and we can do go through the, the presentation uh, and, and so that the public knows that this was really for us to make sure we uh, adhere to the charter requirements of March 31st, but definitely more conversation. So I would ask uh, counselors uh, right now, uh, is a preference to try to go through a subcommittee review level or have uh, numerous special town council meetings to, to tackle each specific like department as opposed to having uh, uh, the specific uh, subcommittees and just have uh, set up a, a, a variety of special council meetings uh, for that. Uh, individual budgets, not to, as we do the review. So council manager, do you have any questions on that? Um. Is it requ it's not required that we go through subcommittee with the budgets, right? It's just recommended for subcommittee to be vetted out. So I think maybe to make it easier, I think maybe we should have special town council meetings. Um, yeah. And there is um, like when we're talking about the budget, if if we have that PowerPoint or those that PDF, we can present it and still talk and people can still hear and they can see what we're talking about. So, yeah, I, no, I, and I think that's, we always uh, schedule the meetings as a joint uh, subcommittee and full council meetings. So that that's my thought was, let's take specific chunks uh, at special town council meetings, unless anybody's opposed to that. I'm not opposed to it. Anybody else? No, I'm okay with that too. Any other counselors out there have? Questions on that? Whatever no, you want okay. to do is fine. Okay. All right, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes. Chairman, just a question for you. Uh, in terms of the budget presentation and maybe even some of the capital stuff, uh, I can have the, some of that stuff put up on the internet tomorrow. Would you guys like it to be up so the public can see it before we do some other presentation? Uh, yeah. Certainly, yes, you can put this summary, the, this PowerPoint up there as part of the uh, presentation as a starting point. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. All right. If there's no further questions, I will move on. There is no citizens forum tonight because of uh, the fact that we don't have the public participation at this point. Hopefully we can get that for the next meeting. I'll move on to if it's okay with anybody, um, just because Mr. Clements is on and he has the last item on the agenda, if we could just move him up for his quick item, if anybody has any opposition to that, I'll ask for unanimous if that's okay. So I want to move. Go ahead, Council Steves. No, I just said I have no problem with it. Okay. So we'll move uh, and just take item 17 and move it to uh, to now. So let's take item 17, which is vote to accept a grant from the Mass Department of Transportation in the amount of $1,836. And please strike the fuel farm replacement because that was not part of it. To purchase a box plow blade from the state department of transportation the town's chair of the co share of the cost is 459 dollars which is 20 percent of the total of 2295 dollars is there a motion so move Second. 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 Oh. all right uh, i guess we'll go mr town manager if you could articulate what this is please i'm sorry the, the, the plow blade you're talking about what yep you're yep item 17. yeah i don't have a lot of information 
I'm sorry. I don't have a lot of information on it. Uh, it's probably, at least from what I was told, is uh, to do the airport runways and stuff is what I suspect that this is for. It, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, any area that they need to plow, it will help them to, to take care of that during the winter. That's my understanding. All right. All right. I'll go. Uh, Mr. Clements, if you could just uh, fill us in on this. I know it's uh, uh, one of these grants that usually we get at the end of the year that we have to uh, match pretty quickly. I'm assuming that this is the case. Is that true? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a, a grant for equipment that the state gives out. If we can apply for different equipment, this happens to be an eight-foot box plow. This plow would fit on top of the would fit on the skid steer that we bought. Um, that the town also paid some money into uh, two years ago. So we build a clear around planes, a smaller piece of equipment. Instead of having people drive trucks around planes, we can get in close with this and get the snow removed and just clean up quicker. So okay. we'll, it's a it's an attachment that will go on the skid steer. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess question for Karen: Do we know where we're getting this money from? Is it coming from the airport? Um, it, it would come from the airport revolving fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, if somebody would make a motion to amend it with the town share coming from the airport revolving account. Approved. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on the amendment? <clears throat> okay, Mary, roll call on the amendment, please. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Okay. Um, so, and Rick, this is the, the last minute type things that they, they get to us, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, we have plenty of money in the revolving account, Karen? Well, I wouldn't say that there's plenty, but I think <laughs> it's enough to cover this. Okay. I, I said plenty, and then I, I wanted to qualify that. <laughs> um, is there any further discussion on this? I just none. have one question. Oh, Council Marchetti, go ahead. I just want to know, does the airport generate any revenue whatsoever? So, Mick, you, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, you want me to answer that? Or Mr. Yes, please. Either yep, one. Mr. Town Manager. So the answer is it does generate revenue uh, in a variety of ways. It generates revenue from gasoline sales. It generates revenue from the tie-downs and the leases of hangars. Uh, it generates some revenue from the solar, uh, the one solar field that's up there. Uh, and it generates revenue from the flight school. So any activities that occur up at that building, even if they want to rent out some space in there for meetings, all of that money goes into the revolving fund. It has to be used for airport type things. So, Thank yes. you. Thank you. Anything further? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other counselors? All right. Hearing none. Um, roll call that. Um, as amended. So. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jobon? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Katrona? <coughs> yes. Okay, motion, motion carries. Moving on. Thank you, Rick. If you want to hang out, you. you can. If not, you can leave. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. All right. Hey, Rick. Thank you. Right. Mr. Chairman, just a quick warning that uh, my phone may be about to die, so I don't know how much longer to stay on. All right. We'll try to keep it. We'll go try to go through this pretty quick then. Um, item nine, vote to approve a transfer of $51,120.12 from project number 63790, wastewater treatment plant, lighting, lightning, protection upgrades, the project number 63640, wastewater treatment plant, electrical upgrade generator, to cover appropriated costs not previously funded is under the Department of Public Works. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Okay. Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'm going to refer to Heather Blake, our DPW director, for the next couple of items. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so um, I will do my best to try to explain this, but... Originally, when this item was proposed, it was 
funded at, it wasn't funded, it was to be appropriated at $225,000. We found funding through other sources through the sewer system for other loans up to 174000 but we never actually funded the other 51000 So we are proposing to use money from the lightning protection upgrades that we have not used all the funds out of that item that was funded out of um, retained earnings and use that 51000 to fund the uh, 51120 12 because of some um, the funny number is to cover some cost for advertising and that will fund that appropriation for that project completely we have already um, voted on if we hadn't fund this money we would have to actually take out a loan and this is so we won't have to take out any loan money so we lightning protections was already fully funded we're not going to use all of that money the money is available the lightning money was actually wrapped into our bigger project when we bid out all the electrical upgrades and is incorporated into that loan. Any questions? Yeah, Mr. Chair, Councilor Adams. Go ahead, Go ahead Councilor Adams. Yeah, I may have missed this. Is there, is there any money left over in that uh, lightning protection upgrades um, if after this uh, $51,000, if it's approved? There is, there's about another, I don't have the exact amount, um, it's about another twenty-three thousand, um, which I want to leave in there until that other, until the whole project is done. It's kind of now acting almost as contingency money for that construction project. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilor Jovan. Yes. Councilor Mana. Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Item 10 vote to approve a transfer of $23,297.74 to account number 600440.520300 collection systems in the amount of $11,420 from account number 600-440-550-400 compost amendment and $11,877.74 from account number 600-440-550-100 chemicals transfer available funds in the sewer budget that are no longer needed due to a new contractor collection system which is almost out of funds as of March, which is the Department of Public Works. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Heather? So, um, as you're all aware, because of our new contract with the wastewater, um, with the sewer department with Veolia, we have now items that were in the original, the old, in the budget, <laughs> they were now wrapped into the contract. Um, these are some of the additional monies that we had in that that were covered in that contract. Um, however, our collection system has run into more issues this year um, and some additional cost to keep that up and running. So we have estimated that through the end of the year, we are going to need additional funds somewhere in the range of $23,000. And basically, I'm just clearing out these two accounts so to give additional money for sewer operations in the systems accounts which is the collection systems that includes all the pump stations um, last year we had more issues at the plant we increased funding there this year we're having more issues in the collection systems we're having to replace a couple of our pumps um, we're having to do more grease removal from our pump stations which used to be something we didn't have to pay for previously it used to be taken by Casella, which is a new cost that we haven't incurred before. Some of the, the costs that are reflected here. Any questions? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have one. Go ahead, Council. Um, okay, Heather, a quick question is, um, actually this is related to both this item and the next one. Um, did I notice that they're, they're coming from two different, one's transferring out of a chemicals account and the other is transferring into a chemicals account. What's the difference between the two chemicals accounts? There was a mistake, and you should have gotten an email today from Yvonne. 
in the original agenda, it referred to this next item as a wastewater. It's actually water. That's why the oh. account numbers are different. So it's two different departments. She okay, that it makes was a mistake, and it was a typo in the original uh, agenda item for the next one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, or hearing none. Uh, roll call. Councilor Mano? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. All set? Yep, that was it. Okay, that was it. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 11, vote to transfer $1,497.26 from account number 61045830009125 to account number 61045050100 chemicals to cover cost of the delivered amount of ammonia for the operation of the water treatment plant over the amount budgeted Department of Public Works. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Heather? Yep. Um this is one of those counts that gets slightly underfunded in previous years. I'm actually addressing it in the next budget and increasing that budget amount. Um, our ammonia costs have just gone up slightly, and we actually have a slight issue with them delivering more than we actually order sometimes. Um, but so that would just to cover what we can, the ammonia cost um, and our polymer cost in upcoming years when we redo our water contract similar to our sewer contract this will be a cost that will be included in it but at this point it's a reimbursable cost that we have to pay for whatever the actual cost of the chemicals are any question mr chair if i could um i just yeah, want to yeah. i just want to clarify that the um the count that this is coming from should say six ten four five zero, which is the water capital reserve. I just noticed that the description was missing and the account number wasn't correct. So nine one two five zero is capital water reserve. Yes. Okay. And at the beginning of it, instead of six four zero four six one zero four, it's six one zero four five zero. Okay, could you just give me that account number? Vote to transfer account. What's okay. in from? From? From 610450. Yep. And then the rest of the numbers are correct, and it's Water Capital Reserve. Which is 583-0009250? Yes. Yep, it's all the, all the numbers, yep. Okay. All right. Is there a uh, unanimous consent for that change? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right. Any further questions on that? What is that one? Yes, Council Marchetti. Why are you using ammonia? Ammonia is used for when for our treatment process for our disinfection. You use ammonia to actually do the disinfection process for chloramines. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, again, vote to tr transfer 1497.26 from account number 610-450-583-0009125. Capital Reserve. Right. To account number 610-450-550100. Chemicals. So, Karen, thank you. Uh, I did not check that. I see that. on, the, But in the transfer request form, you did have that accurate for that. Just for the record, it was accurate on the transfer request form, so it just didn't make it over to the agenda. So, all right. Um, any further questions? Roll call, Madam Secretary. Councilor Marchetti. No. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Steves. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Catrona. Yes. Councilor Daniel. Yes. Councilor Jovan. Yes. Councilor Mana. Yes. Motion okay, carries. Motion. motion carries. Thank you. Item 12, vote to approve a transfer of $7,129.46 from account number 00113257810 Town Council Reserve to account number 
0012205241010 report repair and maintenance of vehicles for multiple high cost repairs to several vehicles that were due to unexpected costs. This is a fire department request. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Second. Mr. Town Manager. All right, fire chief. Chief Norman. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, I guess you didn't know how to do it, huh? Go ahead. <laughs> No, no. So uh, thank you, everybody, uh, through the chair. A uh, little description of what's going on with the fire department. Uh, two primary apparatuses is that we've had some uh, major difficulties this year. Uh, back in January, if you recall, I went through PPP and also uh, the council for approval of ten thousand uh, dollars for repairs to our majorly to our tower truck. Um, the tower truck is a 17-year-old piece of apparatus. It's filled with electronics, uh, hydraulic equipment. Um, we've had some major issues with it. Uh, to date, we've spent out of my budget. Um, if you take the original uh, budgeted amount for $33,000, which we've had uh, over the last couple of years, um, I added $10,000 to that in uh, January. Um, since then, I've spent another five, almost $6,000 on continuing the repairs of the tower truck. Uh, I'm going to knock on wood and say uh, today, right now, the truck has been in service for three weeks now. Uh, it's been back from the vendor and, and the guys have been using it almost on a daily basis just to make sure we have no other further issues. Just a reminder that this is only a, uh, the only truck, the ladder truck we have at this point uh, due to the uh, one that was, uh, is, going, is currently being replaced and we should be getting at the end of the year. Um, secondly, the other uh, item that's been taking up quite a bit of our, our, our maintenance budget was our Medic 2. It's a 2006 um, ambulance. This is the one that is proposed on capital to be replaced this year. Um, again, uh, the 6.0 liter diesel engine. Um, I was fearful of this was going to happen, um, that we ended up spending another uh, for, excuse me, another $2,500 uh, after the last meeting to replace some, to have the engine repaired. Um, unfortunately, this, this motor is, is, is a horrible motor that Ford made, um, and we've been very lucky with it. Uh, it. We've had some regular maintenance done on it. We've had some major issues on that vehicle. Uh, I was hoping to skate through uh, for the next uh, six to eight months without uh, putting a, a great deal of money into it. Um, all in told, on top of the regular uh, preventive maintenance on uh, two of our engines, uh, a repair to our message uh, board, our sign board that you probably see back out on the street now. We just got that back this week. Um, I'm looking for an approval of $7,129.46. Now, let me just make that uh, mention that I, I don't know when these things are going to break down. Um, we've really definitely overspent our $33,000 annual budget. Um, last year, when I took over from Chief DeFranzo, um, I think we used almost that $33,000. Um, but at this point, you know, I'm kind of in dire straits. Uh, the town needs a ladder truck, um, and it's back in, on the road, like I said. Um, the ISO rating, which is the insurance uh, rating that we use for the town, um, you know, we'll be looking at this at some day in the future when the other new ladder truck comes back in. And, you know, I, I have some sort of a plan for this truck that we've spent uh, to date about $27,000 on to keep on the road. So keep that in mind. I know times are difficult with everything else going on, but uh, two things. The ambulance uh, still needs to be replaced and the ladder truck, uh, I, I'll be honest and say it needs to go bye-bye. It's just going to continue to increase in cost as we move forward. Thank you. Any questions for the chief on this? Karen, Karen, could you just uh, tell us uh, what we have in the town council reserve account right now? Um, the balance is 126, 197. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, chief, just one question. I know you mentioned that, uh, that ambulance and definitely I know that was supposed to be uh, it was on last year's capital and then kind of got bounced out to replace that 2006. What's the lead time to replace that ambulance? We're talking six to seven months. If uh, we were to order this vehicle in July, we would probably get it at the first of the year. 
Um, I'm hoping that we can make some movement to make that purchase a little bit sooner through capital, but that obviously is another conversation, uh, hopefully at a sooner than later date. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hey, none, roll call. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Item 13, vote to approve a transfer of $21 from account number 00161055850 book processing to account number 00161053000 program services to, uh, due to an increase in cost for Swank movie license. This is from the library. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Um, we don't have Margaret on. Ron, could you uh, have any information of why she put this through? Uh, the, the answer is really simple. That you know, She only had it within the Swank movie license, the amount that she had for, before the increase. So you know, when they increased the cost, she had to make some transfer to adjust for the increase of the license. Any other questions on that? Hearing none, roll call. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Thank you, Motion Carries. I am 14. Vote to approve a transfer of $500 from account number 00161055850. Book processing to account number 00161054200. Office supplies to cover the cost of additional items not budgeted for fax toners and thermal receipt paper. This again is a library request. Is there a motion? Uh -huh. Second. Second. Town manager. Uh, again, the, the motion kind of speaks for itself. Uh, they needed more facts and toners. They used more than they expected in the thermal receipt paper as well. So uh, they want to make sure they have enough office supplies to get through the end of the year. Any other questions? Roll call. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Motion carries. I am 15. Vote to approve a transfer of $700 from account number 00106315301 program services to account number 00163152100 electricity to cover the remaining FY 2020 invoices for electricity recreation department. Is there a motion? Don't move. Second. Town manager. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, obviously, the program service account has some excess money as we transition from uh, one recreation to a director to another. Some service, some summer programs didn't all occur. So we had a little bit of extra money, uh, I guess. And maybe Karen knows a better answer for the why the electricity went up. If it was under budgeted, I don't see of any reason for that kind of increase. So I, I don't know, Karen. Did he give you any information as to? why the electricity went up by that amount? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could. Um, the electricity for the recreation is generally the best moving, and I believe that that account has been underfunded for a couple of years. So in this, this next budget cycle, we're going to bring it up to where it should be. Um, also, if I, if I could, I wanted to make a correction on the account number again. Um, <coughs> The account number is supposed to be 0016315301100. Okay, you have that, Mary? Can you read it one more time? Sure. 0016315301100. And 
and the description of the correct program services. Got it, thank you. Thank you. I was just looking at the uh, form you had signed. It had uh, 001, that's 0631. There's no zero there before the 631. That's fine. Okay, as long as you get it, Karen, that's fine. Is there any further discussion? Um, I have one quick question for Karen. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm just curious about how, what, what exactly does the rec, what was the recreation department doing that requires this much electricity? Well, from my understanding, this is the um, res building, and they have to keep it on a um, a minimal heat setting, like say at least at fifty, so that the um, the pipes inside the building don't freeze. So this is um, at this point the electricity has been turned down even further. I'm not sure if it's even been turned off because at this point um, there shouldn't be any freezing pipes. And we did have it checked up there. The DPW went and turned it off. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Mayor none. Roll call. Councilor Daniel. Yes. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana. Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Steve. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. And Councilor Corona. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Vote to item sixteen. Vote to approve a transfer of seventy thousand dollars from project number six seven nine zero zero account landfill royalties. Project number 9105 account special appropriation town manager landfill legal to cover invoices dealing with well water issues at the landfill. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Town manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is something that uh, town council will be made aware of. We had a little bit of discussion about this in our last uh, meeting and executive session. One of the things that this has to do with the tax exaction uh, lawsuit um, against the town. And the issue here is that they do what's called discovery. And they request for any possible kind of document that mentions the word landfill or a host of key words. And both Will and uh, the law firm has had to go through boxes and boxes of information to provide to the plaintiff's attorney. Uh, it's outrageous amounts of money, outrageous amounts of time. You went into Andy's office, you'd see uh, where he has that, the table set up in the refrigerator kind of thing it's just loaded with boxes of information uh, we've had a lower priced attorney from uh, our law firm going through those boxes trying to pick out uh, items that would be a concern to the attorneys that work is pretty much done this money is going to be reimbursed uh, by our insurance company uh, we already just got notice of i want to say a little over seventy thousand dollar reimbursement from bills we already sent them this money will be reimbursed as well. You will see uh, this money come back uh, and move into the back into the royalty fund, I believe, where the money will go back into. And we've been transferring money out of this to this particular case. Um, so, um, again, this is going to be insurance money, and it's just a matter of uh, how we account for it through the various line items. I have a question. Go ahead, Council Manor. Just a quick question. I'm just curious. Sure. So um, we're going to be getting reimbursed by the insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, however, because of this lawsuit and the amount of money the insurance company is paying, how much is our insurance going to go up? Or is well, it going to go up? Zero. This, this is not an insurance account by us. This was actually an insurance account that was established by Casella, and the town was a co-insured. Uh, uh, and there's, uh, I want to say, and I don't quote me an exact number, but the town's part of that insurance company was around $3 million, and we've been using that money to reimburse legal fees. Uh, but, you know, the issue there is the more we use for legal fees, the less we have for any kind of settlement. But this is not going to have any impact on the town insurance fees whatsoever. So can I ask you how much... Um I'm sorry, I'm not done. Um, how much we have um, the taxpayers have paid for this lawsuit, or has it been the insurance company um, that's paid the full amount? Oh, hold on. 
So What's your point of order? Point? Hold on. What's your point of order, Council Marchetti? I, I don't know if I'm wording it right, but isn't this executive session stuff we're talking about here? She's asking about legal bills. Did, right. uh, uh, Mr. Town Manager, yeah, just be yeah. careful on some of the things you did state. Okay. Thank you, Council Marchetti. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm very careful of what I'm saying. We're only talking about dollars and nothing about the case and information about the case other than we have to accumulate information. But the answer to the question is that the taxpayers are not paying anything from this case yet. So far, everything is being paid through the insurance fund. Okay, thank you. I think it's very important for the um, taxpayers to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Yeah, one quick one, Jack. Go ahead, Council Steves. Okay, um, and that is, do you have a rough time frame um, for the reimbursement process, Ron? I just got a notice from the insurance company that they're cutting us a check for 70 something thousand dollars. So we're going to get one reimbursement shortly. And as we send new bills, it's kind of shareholders, as they come in, we send them to in a bunch, then they pay, and then we send another bunch. So there's going to be a check coming in, I would think, in the next couple of weeks for a little over 70 grand. Okay, thank you. Are you all set, Councilor Steves? I was actually more curious if we're pay if we're sending them, um, we're sending them a request for money now. Um, how long will it take for them to pay this current request? I know, I do, I know. You said they we're getting one for seventy grand in the near future. So the timing depends upon when we send them the bills. They've actually responded from our like when we send them a group of bills. I usually get feedback from them within a couple of weeks. And then uh, a check comes not that far after. So they're pretty good at reimbursements. What, the, what they're doing is making sure the legal bills that we submit to them are, in fact, used for this particular case. They don't want to pay from something else. That's, the, that's really the validation they're doing. Councilor Steves, we'll see if we can get a better timeline uh, at a next meeting as an update and try to see through Mary when it was submitted and when it came in. So... Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Councilor Jovan? Yes. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. And Councilor Daniel? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Item 18, vote to approve the MIIA Health and Dental Insurance Renewal for Blue Cross Blue Shield plans effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Town Manager. Yeah, so this is just a renewal, our annual renewal. Uh, Melissa's on the phone, so she can give you a little bit more detail. Uh, it's pretty a standard every year kind of thing. So uh, this is... Um, this is actually a negotiated increase from the prior treasurer, Mindy. Um, she negotiated two years ago to have a um, zero increase for fiscal 20 and no more than the average increase of minus um, group increase. So that was the 3.7. So we are this is the max of that that they can charge us that is our person our experience with the town of southridge is actually slightly higher than this so we are we, are, we won, uh, on that on that um contract um we are not changing the plan in any way so this is just um an increase of rates of 3.7 percent any questions mr chairman I do go. all right i'll go to town manager and then to you council steves Actually, you may remember last year when we were talking, a group of towns that formed together to look at possibly setting up with somebody to compete with Maya, and we were having those meetings, and then I think partially what happened is as a result of the Maya knowing that a number of towns were considering leaving Maya, they actually uh, cut their rates from what they would have proposed. So I think this was a good thing from us considering other potential insurance companies uh, I think Maya got, kind of got the message is some frustration of area communities. And it's something if the rates go up in the next future years, something we, we may have to look at again. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, my question was simply, I guess. I'm sorry. I, yeah, go ahead, right. Council Steve. 
Uh, through you to Melissa, I guess. Um, has Have you talked to Maya about any potential impacts that the COVID-19 epidemic is going to have on, on our insurance rates? Uh, no, I haven't talked to them uh, about that at all. If if that, we wouldn't see those um, kind of effects um, until next fiscal, like these, these rates are um, for the whole fiscal year for till the next July, July of uh, 2021. Um, and so what, what looks at our um, rates is our experience. So if we had a lot of people who happened to work for the town of Southbridge and were filing on their personal insurance for um, like a, a COVID hospitalization, because the testing is free. Um, but the treatment is not. So that that would be part of our overall experience should should that happen. Um, but you would also compare to um, other people, like other groups, uh, at, that our experience is either more or less than the norm. And my my guess is that every employer in the state of Massachusetts that participates in this would have very similar experience in that um, in that, and if not, you know, if they live in a more, um, a, a, an area that is more affected by the COVID, then their experience would be higher than ours. You know, comparing us to Boston, for instance. You all set, Councilor Steve? I think so, thanks. Any other questions? Chairman, Councilor Nash. Go ahead, Councilor Nash. Thank you for you. Uh, to Melissa, I think is probably best suited to answer this. Every year I have an issue with this, not with providing quality health care uh, options for town employees. But Melissa, when you look at this, could you estimate what the overall increase in our costs are due to this 3.7% increase on the, the group health? So over last year, I believe that the health insurance, I think we actually estimate slightly less than 3 I think I think it's like 3.25 or 3.2 um, percent that we did of our overall um, increase in the budget, um, and that was because we had slightly less enrollment. Um, I, I will say that I have I did try and shop the plan when I first got here, but because we had um, contracted for this deal, it, it wasn't possible because we had agreed to a two-year term with Maya. But again, like I said, we, we did well based on the experience that we have as an employer. Um, we also did get an additional plan um, that is um, a high deductible plan. So the premium is much lower for the employer and the employee. Um, but at this time, um, because of the way our um, flex plan is set up and not being able to really vet, have the right time to vet that with our employee group, to even offer that as an option right now, I've been advised um, is not a good idea, but I still have it. And it's possible that um, I'm still just in discussions with, with um, our insurer if we can offer a mid-year enrollment for that um, less um, expensive premium um, in the mid-year or, or definitely for next fiscal year. Again, not as a requirement, um, employees can choose <laughs> And they want but as an option you know for me if i want to choose to to pay less a month and and have a high deductible then that would be my, my choice i'll say council Nash. I, no, I, the question i was asking is what does this translate to as an estimate in real dollars cost to the town so i uh, um i can look on um a, I can have um it's on the it's the budget um estimate in dollars. It's like is it six hundred thousand run? I don't remember. I can look it up. Yeah, I don't I'm not sure. Um Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could. Um the, the group health and life insurance is going up one hundred and seventeen thousand eight seventy two, which is a two point eight five percent increase. Council Nash. Okay. I can see that on the budget. Yet our our rates are going up, or the, the rates are going up more than three percent. I just wanted to ensure that those numbers that are presented on the budget are more than adequate to cover, and I, I'm assuming that they are, Karen. Yeah, 
if you say that 117,000 were shown a 2.85% increase, of course, I, I understand that that line item also accounts for life insurance costs. So, it's 117, I assume that the life insurance hasn't gone up at all. So the life insurance hasn't gone up in a number of years, um, but also, like I said, our enrollment, like the number of people participating has gone down slightly, which is why, you know, we don't, we didn't have to go up 3.7% on this, or at least I hope I'm right on that. But when I looked at the enrollment for last year, we were down slightly. Fair enough. Thank you. You all set, Council? Okay. Thank I you. have a question. Council Amanda, go ahead. It's, it's Councilor Nash is done. Were you done, Councilor Nash? I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Councilor Mano? So, Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to Melissa. Does this include the um, retirees? So the, the overall cost does include the retirees. The increase um, for the retirees has been nominal as of late, and so I believe we put in like a 1% or 1.5% estimating the same number of um, retiree enrollment. Um, but that rate is not set in September, so we sort of guess. Okay, thank you. I'm just here in helicopter. I don't know if a lot of people have their mics on, but you might want to mute them because it's like hard to hear sometimes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Melissa? All right, seeing none, roll call. Councilor Mana. Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Steves? Councilor Steves, yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. And Councilor Jovan? Yes. Okay, motion carries. All right, thank you. Um, I had on here old business, just uh, the status of Section 6 200 keeping a pets bylaw. We're scheduled to have a second reading, given the fact that we're not having any public participation on this or this is not live fed. I am going to hold on the second reading on this until we have such time that we have the ability for any public to participate or have questions or have a live stream. Uh, okay, but I just want to put it on. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay, thank you. Council's forum. I'm going to do my best. Council Steves, I'll go with you first since you said your phone may die. So go ahead, Council I don't, Steve. I don't have anything anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Council Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, just to the town manager, uh, the remote policy, um, are we going to try to get that done here in the next couple of days so uh, all the uh, small committees, boards, and all that kind of stuff can go off of one policy, or, or are we going to do a uh, free-for-all with, like, Hangout Zoom and all that kind of stuff? So a couple of questions. Actually, Councilor Nash was asking about that today. So right now we're all using uh, go to meeting is what all the, the town boards and commissions are using except you guys. You guys are still using the education account. The all the small commission meetings, assuming we have them, we'll use go to meeting and will will work with those commissions if, if we have the meeting, which as of right now we're not having any. Andy is um, Eric is doing the ones for the land use boards. So again, it's go to meeting. He's got that all set up. Andy has it set up for the Board of Health meetings. Uh, me and Jack were discussing today. Uh, I want to set one up for me. I, frankly, I can't even meet with my department heads in the same room. So I'm setting up a go to meeting account. What me and Jack, the chairman, are going to have to talk about uh, is what we're going to do for go to meeting account for all the council or subcommittee meetings, if that's what we're going to do. So I think the question, and I said to the council chairman that, I could give the council my account to use for the regular council meetings, uh, but we're going to increase the numbers dramatically of meetings if we do it, if we have the individual subcommittees meet. The cost of a go-to-meeting account is about $150 a year, so it's not a tremendous amount of money. Uh, so I, you know, that's the discussion I'm going to have with the chairman probably tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, one other, one other question, Councillor Adams. Again, Councilor Nash was talking to me about it. As you recall, we budgeted in this budget uh, the money for uh, um, remote participation for next year. And, you know, a few weeks ago, I'm, I'm not sure that that would have passed, but obviously things have changed dramatically. So, you know, I, I think they actually gave Councilor Nash the information of the cost today. If the councilor, if the town councilors wanted to, you know, have us start that process right away, we could, but effectively, 
we're doing it with all the meetings we've already structured. But if we wanted to start early, we could simply use reserve or some other source of funds to start it a little quicker. <coughs> we, the, the, the other key issue, though, is where Jim Cosgrove is, and this has been difficult because both Will and Jim are having an extreme hard time trying to get a hold of any of these companies because they're getting huge requests from all over the country. So it's very difficult to, to get a hold of anybody to talk to. One of the things Jim is working on is that if we have these remote meetings, how do we get the sound from these meetings into the cable system so the public can hear them? Jim has got a couple of estimates, but again, we talked to Jim and he couldn't get a hold of the vendor again. So, you know, it, it's, it's a tough battle, but we're working on it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Council Adams. Uh, just as an uh, aside to that, um, I had communicated back on March 15th the need to get something up on the town. And it's been very frustrating over the last two weeks to try to get some kind of sense of direction. Um, I'm only using this school site because the school is gracious enough to allow us to use it for the emergency operations center and not having something in place on the town side made it very difficult to be able to get this going. Um, I'm looking for a policy from the town manager to say, Hey, this is the gold meeting account. This is how you live stream it. This is the policy every board will use. I don't understand why it's so complicated. I'll work with the town manager on this. There are other towns out there using Zoom and having public participation. I don't know why it's taken us three weeks to get this done. So this is going to be a priority this week to get this done. It's just ridiculous that we can't get it done. That's just going to be my comment on that. because It's been very frustrating. Um, I'll go next to... Um, Council Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All I want to just say is thank you, um, Councilor Adams, and, and everyone, please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Going down the, uh, I'm just going by the list on the side here. Council Marchetti. Okay. Uh, first of all, um, I think you can go live with these meetings. Uh, you, you just have to go on YouTube. I think Jack, you have to do it, I think. I'm not absolutely sure. I was reading about it today. I think you just go on YouTube and you go to go live and um, and you can stream these meetings through YouTube. Um, I think that's how it goes. I, I can send you a link to a video that shows you how to do it. Uh, second of all, um, I did receive an email from the town manager concerning keeping town employees working. Um, even if they don't have any uh, duties to perform or you're just keeping them, trying to keep them going. And I just want to say that I support you on that. And I, th I want to thank you very much. You know, uh, the question right now isn't whether we need employees, it's what are they going to do for an income? And I'm sure a lot of employees are kind of worried about that. So I, I would just want to give you uh, kudos for, for uh, keeping employees working at this uh, difficult time. Uh, hopefully the feds will reimburse us on this. And finally, I just want to say to all the counselors and all the residents in town, I, I hope that uh, you uh, stay safe and healthy and try. To, and I hope the residents try to follow state guidelines and staying home right now. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Marchetti. And again, we'll take a look at that. If you have that information, I do know uh, the question is going to be is how do we publish um, the meeting? So if we have anybody that wanted to call in or watch, how do you do that to have the true public participation if we're gonna have that? And given the fact that uh, we're gonna be doing this at least for the next five weeks, if not longer, we need to have a strong procedure and policy in place. And that's my point. But if you could s send any information, I would appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> I think next was Council Ma Mana. Council Mana? Council Manor, are you still there? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I thought I had it off mute. I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, just to touch on like the um, remote participation for the public, um, you may want to reach out to Charlton because I know their select board just had a meeting <coughs> and um, the public could participate um, live with them. So you might want to, I mean, just reach out to them to see how they did it um, to their to their um, their chairperson. 
Um, I want to thank the police department, the fire department for um, for doing all that I do. Um, the command center, Council Adams, thank you for working with the police department, um, Chief Woodson, and getting all the information out there for, for the public. Um, I hope this is on YouTube too because um, there's some people that don't have Facebook. I know you got had 5,000 views mm -hmm. the other day. Um, but I'd like to see it on, you know, YouTube and possibly go on to um, um, public access as well. Um, thank you very much, though, for all you're doing. Um, and I just want to say that April 1st is coming up, and that's a really, really significant day for people like me who live on alternate side parking. It is. <laughs> so, and I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Everyone stay safe. Thank you. Council Manager, just to your point on the... Uh Cable Access did also videotape that. Council Adams got them uh, there and the chief. Uh, cable Access, and I know I just saw them publish the uh, YouTube over to the Facebook site, so I'm sure that if we get that message out, that the video is available on the uh, YouTube as well. Um, and I'm sure they will publish that on the Cable Access, but I do know I just saw that pop up on Facebook, so I know they did do it. So thank you all to the cable company, especially last Friday night when they came and videotaped uh, when we had our special town meeting uh, uh town not town meeting but town council meeting um and they're really being a good partner to try to help us get as much information out as well so thank you all for that um uh, it really is important uh everybody's doing a great job trying to funnel information through the eoc to make sure it's accurate up to date um councillor nash thank you chairman um appreciate the banter conversation about remote participation. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but a lot of us have a lot of time right now to be perfectly acceptable for me to participate if I can, to look at the town manager's policy that he said on March 4th. And, uh, if anybody wants to attack that and bring it to council, I'm all in favor of it. I'll leave that alone. Thank the town manager for bringing up too during his budget presentation the fact that revenues are going to be a concern. Uh, that's wise to make sure that we're vigilant. And, uh, I realize that presents challenges for Karen and Melissa and uh, some employees, but it presents challenges for us. We're all aware of what some of the unemployment uh, circumstances may present for taxes and revenues and other circumstances in our community. So. I hope we all keep that in mind when it comes time to presenting this budget once again formally to the public, but also in the decisions that we make. Other than that, I'm good for the night. I appreciate everybody's uh, good work on behalf of the community at the EOC. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Nash. Uh, did I miss any other councilors outside of Councilor Daniel? Okay. Uh, Councilor Daniel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to take a minute to thank the Unified Command staff as well as all the members of the EOC for the uh, fine work that they've been doing. Um, it's definitely reassuring to people in the community to know that there's one central place for all the information and uh, it's uh, quite a service that you're providing for the community. I'd also like to thank our regular town employees who in a very trying time, very questionable time, when you're not sure which end is up sometimes, you're uh, still coming in or working from home if need be, doing the job and doing it well because town government doesn't stop. Town services don't stop. They, they still continue. And the fact that they are continuing and doing well speaks well for the people that we have working for us. And that's all I have. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the town council is from Monday, April 13th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Thank you, Council Daniel, and thank you for your kind words. And yeah, especially as it is a trying time for all town employees and everybody involved. Um, we look forward to working with, together to get us through this. Um, I will be out looking to schedule a meeting uh, later on. Uh, well, I'll get back to you all in regards to that about the budget and how we're going to move forward. If anybody has any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me uh, directly. And thank you all for being here for this first uh, really council meeting of a uh, remote uh, type of meeting. Uh, I think uh, we'll see how when I shut off the recording and get uploaded to our site, how this came off. But we'll see about getting this over to uh, the cable access and have them uh, uploaded to cable access if possible. Chief, Jack, I have a, have a question. Yes, sir. 
not not a question actually it's a comment uh this is chief normandon just to let you all know uh obviously chief woodson had uh, a staff uh with a potential exposure to the coronavirus uh which he recently just got cleared this is real folks uh i was just notified within the last 45 minutes one of my firefighter emts uh had an elevated temp um, we will do our process throughout the fire department he was sent home for the evening at this point um, unsure if it was corona or not uh, he will be set up with either his pcp first thing in the morning to get the appropriate test and or uh, moving forward to shrewsbury cvs to get that uh, that uh, that test done um, i just really want to press the fact that uh, we all need to stay safe uh, use any forms of wipes that you have if you do go out in the public um it's 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 hit southbridge it's hit our own people so we need to stay safe okay thank you chief and yes and definitely um everybody out there heed the words uh stay home uh just do minimal travel to get your necessities of life and if we all work together as a community we will get through this uh safely and best of luck to all uh, your employee chief and uh, we look forward to uh Good news on that. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Jack, before we do, Jack, just one, yes. one question. Go ahead. Just, um, is it possible in in future meetings, just um, maybe John can give us a quick uh, update on the town manager search committee meetings? Yeah, yeah, we'll put that uh, forward as uh, uh, committee reports as well. Thank you. When we go forward, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. Roll call. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Catrona? Yes. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Councillor Mana? Yes. Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Steves? Yes. Okay. Thank you all and have a safe evening. Uh, we'll be chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.